in this video I want to go over the stuff that we expect uh, for the architecture milestones or the things that you need to turn in uh, so here's the architecture milestone on our website and uh, as you see here the deliver deliverables we're talking about the models for your app and the views for your app um, so I'm gonna explain uh, what those things mean in a little more detail so first uh, what are the goals of these milestones uh, the reason we have this milestone here and the reason people do uh, some basic architecture design before they start programming is just to get organized right so the main thing you want to do is to define some terms define some classes some database table names uh, some class names some attribute names and just generally get an org organized as to how your app is going to work how you're going to implement it and also to as you're doing that to separate your concerns uh, when you're building large software programs the way we do this is by dividing it into small parts these are parts that don't interact with each other or you know you minimize the interactions with each other as much as you can that way people you know you can assign each one of these parts to a different person in the team and they can work on it uh, kind of independently at least you know without stepping on other people's toes so we call that encapsulation uh, so you want to you know initially try to get as much encapsulation as possible create as many little parts that are separate from each other uh, as you can um, and just in general uh, think before you code so another one another issue that can happen is that uh, uh, you you know make a bad decision early on about you know some uh, attribute that you forgot to put in or you structure things in such a way that later on it costs you a lot, a lot more work to fix so uh, it's good to think about things early on so I want to point out that this is the this milestone the architecture document that you're going to provide uh, which is just a wiki page on your repo so this is not the final word it's just meant to be you know a first pass given what you know about your framework, given what you know about your program, your app that you're building, this is how you think we're going to structure it. Uh, obviously, in almost every case, the final one will be different in some ways, but hopefully, you know, the things that are there will mostly remain. You'll, you'll just mostly add more stuff to it. So uh, what are we talking about? The, the first thing that you're going to add is the model. So uh the model is this is a uh, part of the mvc or model view controller design so that's the m in mvc and the model is going to capture you know the nouns in your app so uh, for example let's say you're building you know some sort of blog app so you're building a blog and that's your app so what do you need? Uh, you're gonna need a, a users table, and uh, so each user is gonna have uh, a name, maybe, and maybe you decide, oh, I'm gonna have a an ID. Typically, you'll have an ID with everything, every database table, and then uh, what else should I have? Uh, you know, a list of friends, uh, password, username, etc. Uh, so you decide uh what things you're gonna have right so this is you know you deciding what you're gonna have and then for each one of these you're gonna have a type so the name is gonna be a string and the id might be a string or it might be an integer uh username might be a string and if you have other uh, limitations about the username must be less than eight characters etc you can write those in here so i'm gonna have a users uh if it's a blog people make posts in blogs so um chances are i'm gonna have something called a post a post will then have i'm gonna say a title and the post is gonna have a body uh, so you see i already made that decision that the post is split into two parts it doesn't need to right it could just have a body like twi twitter um and then uh, i have to decide uh, is the body what is it a string or is it more than a string? Can I say, is this gonna be HTML? 
well, you know, HTML is going to cause a lot of security, you know, cross site scripting issues. So, you know, it's probably a bad idea. You can go with something like a markdown, maybe, uh, and or maybe just plain text. So you decide, right? But that's the point. So you pick your model part of the document. It's going to list, you know, users, posts, and the attributes and their values. And the other thing is the uh, the linking part. So uh, I could say a post is going to have a another attribute, which is going to be uh, the user ID. And then this score is going to be of type user uh, ID. So in this case, we have an integer. And I can just explain, you know, my document, this links to a user ID. So uh, that's the kind of things you have to think about. How are these things linked? Because, you know, in the blog page, I'm going to want to list all posts by user. So, and then at that moment, if you've done this before, maybe, you know, you know, if you haven't, you can think about it a little bit. So you say, well, if I want to display all posts by a user, what do I have to do? I have to fetch, you know, I know that the user dot ID is three. So I have to fetch all posts. We have user ID equals three. So that means going through all the posts in my blog software. And maybe, you know, I have a million users. If I'm lucky, right? So that's going to take a long time. So maybe I want to go the other way. Maybe I want for each user to have uh, an attribute called posts and whose value is, you know, a list of uh, post IDs. And then each post, of course, has an ID and go that way. Or this is using one table. You can use uh, two tables, then another table that maps users to posts if you're taking a database class. You'll know all about that. Otherwise, uh, we can talk about it. Uh, so, but yeah, but then this will be faster because I, I just fetch the user. That's one. And then I once I have the user, I can ask for that user's post. And boom, I have them all there. So that will be a lot faster. Uh, so that's the model part. Pretty cool. And that's what we want. So we, we just want the users and the attributes uh, I mean, sorry, the uh, the tables, so in this case, users, post, and, you know, maybe comments or what, all the tables that you need, all the attributes and their types. And then, you know, a little English description next to each one saying, uh, you know, users are the users in my app. Posts are the post, you know. It's pretty obvious in this case, but in your app, maybe it's not going to be obvious uh, what the word means. So uh, that's that. The other thing we need are views, right? So let's say uh, the app you're building, you're building Facebook, right? And so you already have the design. So you have the design for your app. So you have all these images uh, of your app, what your app look like. If your app is something like Facebook, then you might have, you know, a menu. This might be one of the images uh, for your app that shows a menu and then some ads here and then in the middle. Uh, a list of posts, and this is one post, and this is another post, and then within the post, there's comments, right? And then uh, maybe over here, there's a chat box or something, and a header at the top. So you already have all that image. Uh, when you go to do your views, what you want to do. Uh, what you're looking to do is to break down the whole page into the actual reusable views that you're going to actually implement. So at the simplest, you could say each image is a view. In practice, you almost never do that. You'll have, you know, one view, which is uh, sort of the Chrome. So you'll have uh, the header view uh, or uh, the template view. And uh, so the header view just grabs the header and then maybe sort of the outside Chrome, it doesn't include any of this stuff, just the header and the general, you know, the login and log out stuff up here. And then maybe this one over here is the menu view. So all you're doing is going around deciding which ones of these are the ones that I'm going to actually implement and giving them a name. Uh, this whole one here, I'm going to call that the post list view and maybe I'll call this one a post view 
So I'm going to call that a pose, and then this one I'm going to call a comment, and so on. I'm going to call this one ads. So that's uh, mostly what you need to do. And then when you go to implement the various views, now you have a name. So as you guys are talking in your team, you can say, okay, you're going to implement the menus, you're going to implement a pose and the comment, etc. Now, the thing is, as you're doing this, you have to make the decision of uh, which ones are your views. Like in here, I decided I'm going to have a post list. And then within that post list, there's this another post. And then within the post, there's a comment. Now, I didn't have to do that. I could have just, you know, say, I'm going to scratch that. I'm going to scratch that. I'm gonna, I could have said, I'm just going to have a post list because, you know, I don't need posts and comments. They're, they're all, they're all going to be implemented within the posts list. And that's fine. Uh, that's a design decision that I just made. Of course, what that means is that I can never, you know, if I ever decide, oh, I want to have a post here outside a post list, I can't, right? Because that's not an independent view. And so that's impossible. Now, that might be fine for your app, or it might not be. Maybe your app needs to have posts somewhere else or comments somewhere else, you realize. And just in general, it might just be better to separate those out. So, you know, you make those design decisions at this point. You decide these are going to be the views and name them. That's, that's the big thing is uh, giving them a name. You know, in this case, it's kind of easy. You might think it's easy to name these. Already this one is kind of weird. There's a weird name. And when you do your app, you will realize it's kind of hard many times just to give things names. So this is one of the main things you're doing. You're giving them a name and then everybody in your team knows that's what we're calling that thing here. We're going to call this whole thing a post list. So don't call it anything else and that will avoid a lot of bugs in your program. Um, so as you're doing this, uh, you should also, you should also, one of the things you should have done before is uh, browse your widget library. So if you're doing, uh, say you're doing web design, you may be using Bootstrap, or if you're doing Android and iOS, they both have widget libraries. So a particular widget library will contain stuff. Um, they all have stuff like buttons, uh, buttons and lists or text boxes. But they also have more complicated stuff like an, uh, an accordion list or, or a cover flow. So depending on your platform, it's going to have, it might have some very complicated uh, uh, widgets, which you might want to use. So as you're doing this, you are looking up, you know, the menu. Okay, I'm going to use a list here for the menu. Uh, and then maybe, you know, or just maybe it's called a tree or whatever. So you look up what the widgets are. And mostly what you're looking for is just to make sure that you have all the widgets needed to implement, say, a post. Uh, in some cases, you know, your app might have uh, a thing that you decided to implement for which there is no widget. At that point, you have to create your own widget, uh, which is going to take more time, but it's, it can be done in all platforms, Android, web, whatever. Uh, but uh, what you want to do at that point is say, okay, so this is a view, and uh, you want to annotate that in your view. You can say, well, this is going to require a new widget. And they say, you know, I don't know, it's an exploding button. Your app has an exploding button, and so you can give it a name, exploding button. And just mark that, because, uh, you know, that's something you're going to need to do. You're going to need, need to implement that new widget. And that's, of course, going to take a lot more time than using the existing button. Uh, but, uh, you know, you want it, you're going to do it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but just note it in here because it's, you're going to need to get it done at some point. Uh, and just for planning, you know, planning who's going to do it, how much time it's going to take, etc. cetera. Uh, so, yeah, that's that. And then, uh, so, I mean, this, this basically what you're going to do is just in your document, all you have to do is you can, one thing you can do is you can just take the design image that you did for your design milestone and annotate it. So you can use Sketch or any one of these programs that let you, you know, add text on it and just add on top of it. Let's see, just add the word menu on top of the menu and pose on top of that. 
and then uh, put use that image. Just you see, this is what we're calling things, and then maybe on the wiki page, let's say you know a post is you know write a little English description of what it is. I mean, in this case, it's kind of obvious, but again, for your app, a post might be something else, so you might want to describe it in a sentence or two. Uh, so yeah, that's what you have to turn in. Uh, just the list of views and maybe a little explanation about each view. If any view requires new widgets, uh, you definitely also want to note that you know this view here uh, is going to require a new widget, and the widget is going to do this other thing. Uh, so that's what we need for that. Uh, one last thing uh, for web apps. Another thing you might want to do. You know, For web apps, another thing you might want to do, I'm going to erase this, is uh, you might want to also list the URL space. So for example, uh, user slash user slash ID, uh, that might be a, you know, a relative path in your web app. So whenever somebody goes to slash user and then say slash three, they're going to, and they do a get at that page, uh, they're going to get, you know, that user's web page. If they do a post, then we're going to update that user's information. And same for, you know, comment. Uh, and then in this case, you know, it might be a little more complicated because you have to say associated with particular post ID and uh, maybe the user ID or something else. Um, so, um, a get or post. So uh, this is what I'm saying, talking about, the URL space, just listing all the URLs, at least as many as you can figure out, and just what they do when you do a get or a post to that URL. And typically, these will be this sort of a one-to-one -one correspondence between each one of these and the images in your design milestone, right? So each one of these is like a page. And you know it's pretty straightforward, but mostly what you're looking at is what is the shape of the URL. So is it slash comment slash post ID slash something else, or is it slash com and then post ID, or is it slash user slash comment uh, slash post ID? So you just want to get down, you just want to write down what the URL space looks like. So again, everybody in your team is on the same page and because one of the first things you're going to need to do is start writing uh, this whole, you know, uh, the navigation for your web application. So it's good to have all these things uh, spelled out early on. So uh, if you're building a web app, that might be a third thing that would be a third thing you will want to put in your uh, architecture document is just the list of URLs and what each one is going to do.